Well, I'm back from Anaheim and VidCon 2015, and I got some new parts in the mail while I was gone, and some of them you see on the camera here. Um, I'm going to start with this. The ES Model 7. This is that uh, Wi-Fi uh, thing. It's on a breakout board. But something to be aware with this particular board is it is not ex still is not exactly breadboard friendly if you have one of the smaller breadboards. Um, once you plug it in, there's no way to get any more wire jumpers onto it because the rest of the breadboard is under it. So I've resorted to back to the thing. I ordered some more wires, some more jumpers. This is male to male, female to female, and male to female. So I got all the jumpers covered now for Arduino projects and things of that nature. <clears throat> I also got this double relay module in. Use it an opto isolator to trigger a five volt uh, signal. <coughs> um, I didn't get this in. This is just the contactor of an air conditioner. But I did get these batteries in. These are 12 volt, 1.2 amp hour batteries, and I've got three of them for nine dollars <laughs> shipped to the door. No extra shipping or any of that. And yeah, um, I'm back on. What the project is at hand now is Arduino Uno ES module, Wi-Fi module. I'm starting to use these because these are FCC certified. There's certifications on it, numbers. Whereas the ones that were below the Model 7s are not compliant. They don't have any, you know, they're just Chinese, you know. I don't like using non-compliant things and situations where I need to use things this is the way I am if you're a ham operator or something fine you know but I'm a commercial person and I build controls for radio equipment and towers and strobes and lights and all kinds of different little wonky things and this is all prototyping right now but if I'm going to build some of a commercial application it's going to be type accepted certified classify classified you know, proper stuff. <coughs> um, it also won't be like this. It'll be on our own circuit board, manufactured board, and all that. Double relay board, battery, this. There was some other stuff. I got a barometric pressure sensor. It finally came in. I got uh, some other little tidbits I got. Um, I can't even remember. I'm still waiting on the OLED display I ordered. It hasn't come in yet. It may be here today, later on, or tomorrow. <coughs> well, what this is, is, is this is a remote control. It's using this. This is actually the heart of the system. This here will fire a logic level signal to a you know for the Arduino to detect if you have three volt relays I mean this thing is not really got enough amps on it to fire a relay I mean it will but it might be bad for it so we're going here and then here an Arduino Nano will not do this because again it does not provide enough amps to fire a relay I've tried <coughs> um, powering this is kind of a, a little bugger of course, you don't want to power this at full rake Wi-Fi with off of the off of the Uno. It's not going to supply the three two hundred fifty three hundred milliamps. I like to give these things five hundred milliamps at least to work with. You know, these Wi-Fi cards pull anywhere from two to two hundred fifty milliamps plus your relay might pull you know fifty or hundred milliamps or whatever. You want to have some headroom with this stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the exception of the battery, the battery's function for right now is just to fire this contactor. It's only a 12 volt battery, but it will fire a 24 volt contactor. Now that's just a regular air conditioner contactor. You can get it from any appliance store anywhere from five bucks to fifteen bucks, depending on the amperage and what you want to switch. Some of them may cost more. It just depends on where you go. It depends on if your local store wants to rape you in the pocketbook or not. But that's not why we're here today. We're not here to talk about 
the highway robbery of the air conditioning business. <clears throat> I'm here to demonstrate, and I'll show, I'll post the code. I'm not going to go into the computer with the code and show you. It's a very simple code. I still need to put some pull up and pull down resistors on here because this here can cause some uh, interference where it will cause it to trigger itself again. So I want to try to move it away. But what I'm doing here is there's a web interface. And I get my other phone. Turn my other phone on. And let's. Right now it says it's off. So we'll turn it on. And you should hear it. There. Relay's on. That's on. I'll turn it off. It's off again. Small text though, but this is running Node MCU. It's got a Lua script that serves up the web. And it's causing the pin, input pin, of a, of a GPIO2 here is what I'm using. <coughs> it's causing pin 2 on the Arduino to go high. When it detects it here as a signal, it causes pin 10 to go high with enough amperage to fire the 5 volt relay right here off its logic and in turn that's completing a circuit from the battery to this big one and that fires this. Now this contactor is rated up to 600 volts at about 40 amps per pole. It's a single pole relay. The old, so I can switch, you know, contact lady per pole, uh, 240, 277, up to 40 amps, 160 amps. Yeah, 160 amps here. But I can essentially switch my mains on and off with this thing. I mean, I wouldn't do that, not with a single pole, but well, I would have more amps on it. But I could switch some pretty high-end, like, heavy amp drawed equipment, like halogen lights or... Uh, heaters or you know things like that with security lights security halogens and stuff and i can do it with my smartphone as long as i have a wi-fi connection or internet connection now this is on local lan right now it's on the local area network now it's not you know served out in it's going through my router <coughs> And all I have to do is go in to my router and to the, uh, the DMZ and set the DMZ IP to the IP for this. And then go into my web host, my uh, domain host, and put my IP address, my external IP address for my, mo you know, my internet service here in there. And then assign it to a domain name and I can go to my domain name like my dot org or dot 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 net or whatever one of my domains and I get this same screen I could be on the other you know in another state across town or on the other side of the fucking world on a laptop it'd be able to turn my security lights on and off on my phone or laptop now, I recommend this board. It's very easy to program. Everything is labeled on the breakout. You can buy these with or without the pins already soldered. Um, I had to solder my pins on. Um, but just be aware if you want to use this on a breadboard that this is not exactly breadboard friendly. I mean, the pin spacing is proper for a breadboard, but you need a wider breadboard or a bigger breadboard. You know, one of the wider ones, not the yellow standard ones that are for this. You need a bigger one for this to go in and still have your access to plug your jumpers. Um, the version 3 of this I have is definitely not breadboard friendly. It's... <laughs> They got it on a motherboard, a breakout board, but it's like it's the same pin spacing and arrangement as the version one, but there's two of them now. There's all the I.O. outputs. Um, 
I have ordered some 12s and 13s, which are supposed to have even more outputs, and a header across the top, and I'm hoping that they make a breakout board that is not quite as wide as this, that has all the pins to where you can get on them. Other than that, I'm going to have to order a bigger breadboard. But the end product of this would be me just ordering the modules. Now, the version 13 that just come out, or not, they don't have a, a, a breakout board for it. It's just a little module. It's got pins at the top, pins, you know, over the top and bottom and on the sides. It doesn't have this connector, which I favor. This is an external antenna connector. I do favor these, but... You know, it works just as good with this internal if it's going to be right here in the house. Um, my finished product will consist of the AT Mega chip. It's, of course, it's RAM and some LEDs, not actual Arduino, but everything on a board already programmed up with the codes I need. Then this module and then a bank of relays all on a circuit board with terminals and an external antenna, you know, the proper antenna coupling and an external SMA out and all in a box and could easily be interfaced in to things like contactors like this to switch solar power, to switch lights or, or whatever and do it all via remote. There's also plans to put in a volt and amp meter built into this system with some more modules and stuff. But I'm just playing around right now um, I'll put the, the code is very very simple. It's only a few lines. It's not some gargantuan code The Lua script is basically the Lua script that comes with node MCU. It's in the examples for uh, Web enabled device or I forgot what it's called um, But yeah That's this is my remote control I've been playing with this morning um oh well, yeah that's about all i have to say about it for now i mean this thing here has more io outputs than my other one does and this relay is really nice but this relay i'm ordering us i'm going to get another a bigger bank of these this is for another project that i am working on for an application that's going to be in the field um and it'll actually be using a nano with a booster to fire these relays. It's external power or whatever, but for some radio stuff. But this here, I, yeah. Anyway, simple uh, remote control thing here. And I'll see you guys later.